Hello all. Today, Kagesh Kumar will go over how to perform basic data processing of Excel absorbance data collected at a beam line. Uh, so uh, this pre-processing is required before you move on to do Zane's analysis or XAPS fitting. Uh, there are a number of software that are available on the web for this the, uh, XS analysis. For part of this video, we will use the mediated package developed by Bruce Raver from Brookhaven National Lab. Uh, the software is available uh, is available for both for Windows, Mac, and Linux. For Windows, it's a straight uh, installation package. I, I believe for Linux and you, uh, Mac, you will have to install a bunch of Perl packages to make it work. Uh, uh, this package will install three programs. First will be Athena. This is uh, for pre-processing and uh, doing basic Zane's analysis. Then there is Artemis that is to fit XF, to do XF modeling and data fitting. And third is Hepistus that generally contains the library of edge energies and bunch of other stuff. Before jumping on to data analysis and pre-processing, uh, it's a good idea to know how data is collected at the beam line. Uh, this area, this is a region that you s is available in the hutch. All the others are the optics that is generally taken care of by the beam line staff. Uh, depending on your sample, you will you uh, you can prefer the data uh, collecting data in uh, transmission and fluorescence or both. Uh, uh, the beamline generally have offer, uh, also a reference channel the, uh, and reference channel generally comprise of a, a foil of the element that you're working with. Uh, the reason to have a reference channel is though today beamlines are very stable in at energies, but over a course of few hours, the energy moves and it, uh, the reference channel helps you to align the edge energy to the required value. So depending on your uh, beamline, uh, these uh, I0 descriptor might be different it, I, it can be i1 i i2 i3 and they can be multiple channels for the same thing for example generally fluorescence if collected at different detectors will have multiple channels so this is something you should be mind of, mindful of and you should ask your beam and scientist how which kind of detector and what what all uh, value should be concerned about now jumping on now we can go move on to uh, basic data processing so this is the Athena software <clears throat> and uh, the usual interface. So import data and you will go into the directory of your file. So uh, you can import multiple files at the same time as long as the detector arrangement for all of them are same. So these all were collected one after the another and so i can open them all at the same time once you open it this this window will open this will ask you to select the channels that you want to open and depending uh, uh either it will be very clear from the uh, keywords here or you can ask between scientists which are the column responsible for uh, your fluorescence or transmission data so this spec, uh, this, this material was collected in trans uh, fluorescence, and channel number eleven is the IF, and channel number four is I zero. So this gives you a spectrum, and this also had ruthenium foil as a reference channel, and that corresponds to nine and four. So and this would be a natural log because you are collecting this in absorbance. So. Once you have figured this out, so depending on your data, you can you may ha have to click multiple of these channels. It depends. Uh, so it once you are satisfied with the columns, you can click OK, and this will load all the, those data. And depending on how many files you are uh, uh, loading the same at the same time, it might take a while. So first thing you should look at while your while you load the data is 
if your element that is shown here is uh, the element you want to work with. So uh, the sample is indeed ruthenium KH and so that's a good thing otherwise depending on your situation you might have to manually get this to the element of interest and this matters uh, down in uh, downstream when you are doing further analysis so it is uh, the, this is the first thing you should check uh, the second thing uh, so now so as we talked about that energy might not be at the right position so as we have loaded reference channel, so each of the file will have a reference file that is associated with it. So any ch uh, change, uh, any energy alignment that you or calibration that you make on the reference channel will be reflected in the main file. So uh, so let's calibrate the energy first. So uh, so these all in the middle, just below this drop down menu, you will have you will find calibrate energy data. So once you click on calibrate data, it will take you to this window and this uh, plotting window will change. So you just, the best idea is to go to second derivative of the plot and get the zero crossing. So this is the inflection point. And to verify, you can also check the, norm, the normal spectrum. Ideally, it should be on the rising edge, somewhere on the rising edge. So if you're satisfied, uh, if you uh, if, if it's on the rising edge and the zero inflection point, you can calibrate. So now you can return, you can look uh, get to the main window and you will see this data is shifted by 9.33 EV. Uh, and we did some, we made changes to the reference channel and it also it's reflecting in the um, main data main sample. So. As the sample were collected one after the, after the another, uh, this value should be same. But uh, I suggest you check for each of these values that each of these are making sense. So if you're sure that these values are not changing over time, so you can just uh, set these value for all the samples in this in this drop down. So now all the samples will have the same shift. So now we have calibrated the values. So now we can move on to how to do a background subtraction. So there are various, uh, before that, there are various ways to plot a, a sample uh, sample spectrum. So the first is, uh, the, the, all the violet, purple uh, buttons are to plot if you have multiple data. So if you have, say, uh, two spectrum, it will plot one on top of the other. And if you place the yellow one, it will only plot one of spectrum. So, and while you, the yellow spectrum will show you uh, the pre edge, post edge, you can see how where pre edge and post edge are. Uh, and you want to make sure that they are at the right position. So, uh, so pre, uh, pre edge looks fine, post edge. Uh, you can change the post edge. So to change the post edge, you go to normalization range, select this button, something like this. So this is uh, a good uh, spectrum. And depending on that, you might have to, so if you see this, the, the background and there's a kink like this, it means uh, the E naught value is not best uh, set so you can uh, go and change this value to the time it gets to a straight function okay so this looks like looks better without any kinks it means the Fourier transform this data is looking good and there's one so you should look at the whole data at the same time to see if there is any unusual kink that you need to take care of so uh, at this point, you, uh, it's a good practice to plot all these data to see if it makes sense. So as is, these are the same sample, uh, the, 
the plot shouldn't change a lot idle should be exactly the same and it is exactly the same so um, uh, this data was slightly noisier at the in the beginning so the best uh, so that's why you collect more than one scans for each sample at each edge so once you are so sure that uh, the data looks uh, good after uh, background subtraction so a good practice is to look at the the zines region if it is uh, look it's if it's good once you have make sure um, then you can go ahead and merge all the spectrum this will give you a uh, more uh, this will reduce in uh, noise did not reduce the Gaussian noise but so so now this uh, this data has far less noise than any other any other data collected previously so this is a single data set that was collected previously and this is and the uh, red one is a process uh, merge data and uh, now, now this can uh, this merge data can be used further for XAPS or Z 